Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about the suck of living in worry prison and how to escape to planet prosper once and for all. So what do I mean by worry prison? Is that just being over dramatic or is that a real thing? And I'm here to tell you it is a real thing. I've been on the front lines of capitalism, coaching mortgage pros to success for over 15 years. I can tell you so many of the people I reach out to and who reach out to me are suffering from the plight of living in worry prison. So what is worry prison? Worry prison is the uncertainty of the future. Uncertain about what's going to happen when rates go up. Uncertain about where is my next deal going to come from? Not being able to plan for the future. Uncertain about whether or not they're going to be able to keep the trajectory they're on. Are they able to grow or are they going to stagnate or regress? So there's this uncertainty about the future that has them concerned, fearful, worried, anxious. And that often is not just a little blip where you feel it and then it's gone, but it's often like a monkey on your back where it's that if you slow down, even for a nanosecond, that bear is going to eat you for lunch or dinner. And so I've been there myself, frankly, where I got this pit in my gut. I've got this tension in my head, this tension in my back or chest. And it's just this tension that's fueled by fear, fueled by what is going to happen if I can't figure out how to keep revenues up and the bills keep coming in and I got to slay dragons for the family and I'm on 100% commission. You eat what you kill, no safety net. And I fall short and I don't want to let my family down. I don't want to let my spouse down. That's a real fear and a real concern for many. And many people, frankly, live years and even decades in that worry prison, never finding a way out, finding a way out temporarily when they have a good month or a good quarter. But then it's this elusive butterfly to be able to escape it long term. It's like they're trying to escape worry prison Alcatraz and they just manage to escape into the hallway. And then just when they feel like they're making some inroads, stagnation sets in, regression step sets in. They have a bad month. A few deals get derailed or implode. Next thing you know, they're getting you know, absconded and brought right back into that cell that they tried to escape from. I don't want that for you. You don't want that for you. So that's what we're talking about this is how to escape the Alcatraz of worry once and for all. Now, there are different types of worry for different types of mortgage pro uh, professionals. So let's talk about newbies for a moment. What's unique about a newbie when it comes to worry prison? Well, obviously their worries are quite different than the veteran. So newbies tend to be concerned about wanting to get off to a fast and profitable start, wanting to avoid the pitfalls and mistakes that are common to many, wanting to avoid those landmines due to just not knowing what they don't know and having the costly mistakes of failure that have them waste time, waste energy, time they can never get back. And ultimately the worry about having to stick their tail between your legs, admit, admit defeat and failure and having to go back to punching a clock nine to five, having a glass ceiling over their head, having an office ball and chain around their ankle and having to give up on their dream of freedom and settling for a second best life and the humiliation of it, the embarrassment of it, feeling like they're letting themselves down, their spouses down, their kids down, missing out on the ball games and the dance recitals because they're at the office all day in office prison instead of being able to be footloose and fancy free living life on their own terms, not being able to make more than 50, 60, 70, 80 K a year, or having to bust their buns working crazy hours and having no life and living parallel lives with their spouse because they never see them because they're working at the office and their spouse is having to hold it down as a single parent for the kids and having to watch their kids grow up through social media because they're not able to be at those special moments and those milestone moments and those magical moment events because they're again not in control of their life and their time and their freedom. These are all real fears for newbies, not to mention jacking up their credit card with wasted money on marketing and licensing and 
uh, having to float the boat financially on home equity line of credits or credit cards or savings, depleting their net worth because they're not able to make enough money. So they're having to deplete their net worth in that shortfall, bleeding financially every month and then wasting six, 12, 24 months of their life to no avail and starting at the bottom of the barrel at the bottom of some other proverbial ladder, not even knowing if it's leaning against the right building. And now they're having to start all over again from scratch with their tail between their legs, admitting defeat and failure, losing their mojo, their self-esteem, their self-respect, and just limping along through life in regret. That's a special kind of suck, friends. No one wants to go through that. But that's a real fear for many newbies. And truth be told, statistically, 80% of mortgage prof professionals who get into this business get chewed up and spat out within just two years. And those who manage to survive only make 75K. And that's before tax, not after tax. That's not much to live on when you got some kids to feed and you got college funds to take care of and you got a spouse to provide for. You and, o you and I both know that's not a whole lot to be able to you know, live life on after everything's said and done. So those are real newbie fears. Now let's talk about veteran fears for a moment. What do veterans fear or what are their concerns that's unique to them? Well, a veteran is someone that in my mind has been in business for at least three years. They have now a database of past clients, maybe a hundred or more past clients. They've been in this case right now, as I speak, we're at the tail end of 2020, it's been an absolutely remarkable refi boom. Uh, one of the most historically low rates we've seen in any recent history, if ever. And so it's been an amazing year for many veterans. They're riding high on this rising tide with uh, incredible refi business, even purchase businesses up because rates are so low and everyone's getting in on the transactions in real estate because it's so affordable right now with rates so low. And people are concerned that eventually rates will go up. So they're pouncing on the opportunity to get in. So it's a great seller's market, not so much a buyer's market, but nonetheless, the crowds are still hoarding and stampeding to get in. And we, chances are, we'll see this for the next six to 12 months to some degree. The question is, when will rates go up? So a big concern for veterans is, What's going to happen when rates go up and I'm caught with my pants down, unequipped and ill-equipped, and I lose 40, 50, 60 percent of my income, and now I'm having to scramble to recoup my investment? It's the uncertain future of will I be able to sustain this incredible income? I'm having a great year. The problem is I'm only as good as my, my last deal, and I don't know when this gravy train will end. And so for many veterans, that's the big concern that they're mulling their mind over is when will this gravy train end? How long will this continue? And that fear of the future steals joy in the present. They're not able to fully savor this dream income they're making because A, they're concerned about losing out on this in the future, having this gravy train derail and regressing and scrambling to recoup the income and they're busier than a one armed paper hanger and they have no time to enjoy their income because they're just so busy and frazzled and fried and burnt out. So it's kind of a dual drain, a dual joy suck. But nonetheless, it's the uncertainty of the future that is in the back of many veterans' minds, especially if they have 50% or more of their income currently coming from refinance and they don't have a proven plan aside from using old school methods from the dark ages to be able to recoup that refi business by going after realtors and you know going back to the grind cold calling. And chances are most veterans do not want to go back to the grind cold calling realtors. That is like gag reflex, gag reflex, yuck, right? It's like, who wants to do that? But that's often the foreboding precipice. Many veterans are eyeing up in their future, that's an inevitable necessity that they're going to have to be forced into if they don't get this fixed. So we've talked about newbie worries. We've talked about veteran worries. Let's talk about the biggest fear ultimately for mortgage pros. The biggest fear I've seen 
across the board for all mortgage professionals, newbies and veterans alike, is just the fear of not being able to provide for their family, not being able to secure their freedom long term, not being able to create that dream life, that freedom life, that abundant life that got them inspired to get into the business to begin with. And having it feel almost like they're chasing a elusive butterfly, like they got in the business for freedom, for autonomy, for independence, for flexibility in their schedule, to have unlimited in, you know, income potential, and to be able to create an abundant life for their family. And yet there's always seems to be a component of that that's missing. Maybe they're making great money, but they have no time. Maybe they're, they have lots of time, but no money. Maybe they're training up their competitors. You know, they invest time, energy, and effort and talent into these, you know, new staff. And then they just go and take that knowledge and that skill, and then they take a leap on their own. And so you end up training your, your own competitors. So there's a fear of, will I ever be able to create that dream life? And even when they're making better money than most, there's a fear of regressing and going backwards and sliding down the mountain. And so it's that uncertainty yet again. It's all uncertainty about the future. It's like they're building their house on quicksand, not the rock of Gibraltar, but quicksand. And so that's really at the foundation of those fears, those worries, those concerns, and that anxiety. It's uncertainty. It's lack of security. It's lack of con confidence. It's lack of consistency. And it's uncertainty about that future that is unknown. And so how do we escape from worry prison once and for all? How do we escape? I mean, there's so much going on right now, right? With COVID, we're having to wear masks everywhere. We're concerned about what's the future? How long will this COVID crazy go on? Many of us aren't be able to do the things we used to be able to do, whether it be going out to restaurants or whether it be hanging out with friends or family or whether it be being able to just throw a party, having a birthday party for our kids or our spouse. All that stuff has now been constrained or restricted. And some of you, you used to go to the gym. Now you're not going to the gym because you don't have that freedom anymore. It's been shut down. You're trying to do it from home, but you don't really have the motivation to do it from home like you did at the gym. There's so many different things that are weighing on us, right? It's been a very difficult season for many, even if you're making more money than you ever have before. It's a challenge. Some of you, like I was talking to a guy last week, he's in California, and I don't know if this is across the state, but he was telling me his kids have been out of school for months since March. And so now he's having to juggle being super daddy, wearing the apron at home, plus managing these kids and herding cats with managing homeschool and trying to build his business at the same time. That's a lot. So, you know, obviously escaping worry prison once and for all is sounds too good to be true, especially in the face of these unprecedented, uh, unprecedented times. It seems like, you know, a tunnel tunnel vision thing that would never happen. Like, you know, pipe dream, pipe dream door. You got to be kidding. That's never going to happen. So obviously there are always going to be challenges. There's always going to be problems. There's always going to be setbacks. There's always going to be turbulence. That's called the fiber and fabric of real life. Get used to it. Welcome to being alive. The question is, is it towing you around by the proverbial nose? Is it dominating your spirit? Is it stealing your joy and your peace? Is it stealing the life energy from you where you're feeling drained and despondent and depressed? Or are you putting those fears and those problems under your feet? Do those fears and problems have dominion over you? Or do you have dominion over them? That's really the question. Because if they have dominion over you, you're the prisoner. You are the prisoner. And I'm here to tell you, you were not born to live a prisoner to fear. You were born to be a prisoner to faith, to love, and to purpose, and to put fear under your feet, to have dominion over fear, not by fear. You were born by greatness, for greatness, for a great purpose. And it wasn't to live a life of fear. But with the news swirling, with all a matter of ne negativity, with no shortage of drama and trauma going on in the world, it's so easy 
to put our focus on the negative, isn't it? It's so easy to put our focus on how we are powerless as opposed to being powerful. But I'm here to tell you what we focus on expands. And if we're focusing on our lack, limitation, scarcity, if we're focusing on what's not working in our life and in the world, if we're drinking from the toilet of negativity by watching the news, reading the news, I'm not saying don't be informed. By all means, scan the headlines. But do you really need to take two hours a day to drink from the toilet of all that negativity? I don't know about you. I'd rather be empowered than informed. So I'll do a quick scan of the headlines. That's it because I'd rather be empowered than informed. And I know what I focus on expands, what I put my attention on, where I put my focus on, my energies flow and my results show. So I want to put my attention on what's expanding. I wanna put my attention on what's growing. I wanna put my attention on what I wanna manifest and create. I wanna put my attention on what I'm grateful for. I wanna put my attention on what I want to create in my life and my business, not, not the shit show of this world, not the shit show of all the problems that I could be focusing on if I wanted to. So how do we escape worry prison once and for all? Number one, we need to understand that if we focus on our fear, we get more of it. The philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson had a great quote about fear. He said, do the thing you fear and that which you fear will die. Do the thing you fear and the death of fear is certain. And that is so true because fear is the only thing in the universe that gets smaller the closer you move towards it. When you face the eye of the tiger and you do that which you fear, you realize it was false evidence appearing real. Now, most people have the opposite paradigm. Fear means F everything and run, right? They put their tail between their legs and they just freak out and their knee jerk reaction is to play the bitch to fear, to let fear tow them around by the nose, to let fear control them. Let other people live by fear, but not you. Live by faith, live by love, live by gratitude, live by a life of faith on purpose, with purpose, and do the very thing you fear. And the death of fear is certain. So how do you do that practically? First, you decide what you want to create in your life. You decide the kind of income you want to earn. You decide the kind of lifestyle you want to live. You decide the kind of life you want to create. Most people don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. They don't know the income they want. They don't know the lifestyle they want. They're more focused on surviving than thriving. And because they don't know what they want, they just settle for second best. The problem is not that most people shoot too high and miss. It's that they shoot too low and hit. Don't let that be you. Let other people settle for an average life, but not you. You reach for higher ground. You realized you're made by greatness for greatness, for a great and high calling and purpose. You were born to be a winner. God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with you. So let that sink into your core. Let that sink into your heart. Your identity is a winner. And then get clarity on what mean, winning actually means to you. Because if you don't know what you want, chances are you're not going to get it. You've got to have clarity. Clarity is power. And then you start to give thanks for that dream in advance. Give thanks for all that you have in your life now. Your health, your spouse, your significant other, your kids, your business, your income, your ability to actually have a livelihood. The fact that you're in an industry that's considered a essential service. You have so much to be grateful for, especially in these times. When's the last time you really were mindful to practice an attitude of gratitude? If it's not a daily thing, you're leaving a lot of joy on the table. I'm here to tell you that right now. So you have to, number one, know what you want. Number two, it's all about Focusing on what you want, not what you don't want. Focusing on gratitude as opposed to lack, limitation, and scarcity. And then it's about having a team of people in your circle, on your team, who see the greatness in you, who see you as a champion, as a winner, as an overcomer, who see the God calling, the God potential in you. Instead of 
your past failures, who can breathe life into and being a champion for you and your dreams and goals, to be your advocate and your champion. If you don't have those kind of people in your life, you need to and you need to now. Start to cultivate a circle of champions because rarely will your results exceed the level of your personal network. If your personal network is addicted to stinking thinking, excusitis, settling for mediocrity, if they're griping, whining, sniveling and complaining people who are always focused on the news and focused on what's not working and focused on griping about what's not working, chances are you'll be the next. You wanna surround yourself with a circle of champions who think like champions, who speak like champions, who ascend to a consciousness that has them feeling blessed, being blessed and being a blessing because chances are that's who you want to become, not the whining, silly, complaining, griping person who's never got anything to say unless they're complaining about something. That is not the person you want to be hanging with because they're going to drain you. They're going to pull your energy down and they're going to facilitate pouring gasoline on your fear pouring gasoline on your anxiety. They're going to keep you shackled in worry prison. The antidote to that is living a life by faith, which means cultivate faith, cultivate an attitude of gratitude, cultivate a positive expectation, cultivate certainty that you are blessed and only becoming more blessed. Cultivate certainty that things are good in your life, and as I like to say in proper English, they're only getting gooder. They're good and getting gooder. When people ask you, how are you doing? Do you just say, okay? Or are you like me and say, I'm blessed and highly flavored and favored? Good and getting gooder, right? You want to be able to create an identity of being someone who's blessed and grateful. And how you do that is you make it a practice. You make it a habit. Do you have a habit of gratitude? Do you have a habit of speaking positive expectation, not fluff, not hype, not BS, not being a plastic, you know, Mr. Saunders like in uh, Mr. Flanders on the Simpson, Simpsons, who's just like this plastic, overhyped weirdo. I'm not talking about that. I'm not, I'm talking about really being authentically connected to gratitude every day. Do you have that practice? And it's not being delusionally optimistic either. I'm not talking about, you know, whistling in the wind, heading east, looking for the sunset, right? Because that's not intelligent. I'm not talking about sticking your head in the ground and playing the ostrich either. That's not what this is about. This is about having intelligent, strategic thinking and taking inspired, intelligent action, but having an attitude of gratitude and putting fear under your feet and living by faith, not fear, living with heart, with gratitude, with joy, with love, with peace in your heart. Easier said than done. That's where the practice of it comes in. We don't start throwing around 200 pound weights in the gym if we've never been to the gym before, just because we want to. We throw around big weight in the gym because we've cultivated the muscle. It takes conditioning. It takes practice. The same goes with your peace, your power, your poise. The same goes with living by faith versus living by fear. It takes practice. It takes the consistent daily cultivation of certainty, joy, peace, power. And all of that is something you can build into your daily practice. So this is one of the reasons why mortgage professionals hire us, because frankly, it's easier said than done. And most people just don't know how to do it. And so you might be here right now listening to me and saying, Doran, it sounds great. I'm picking up what you're putting down, but how do I do this practically? I got no leads. I don't have enough people to talk to. I don't have quality borrowers to be able to fill my pipeline with. I don't know how to attract top producing agents to make me their exclusive. I'm doing old school methods from the dark ages, cold calling the same 40 realtors every Monday. Dorn, it's easier said than done. I'm banging my head against the wall here. This hurts. So I get it. That's why people hire us because they don't want to just have these lofty ambitions, ambitions for champion level results with fruitless toil. 
whistling in the wind, head and east looking for the sunset, going to the gunfight with a butter knife, that freaking sucks. You know you're going to get bludgeoned, right? That is not going to bode very well. They understand, they're intelligent enough to know it's a lot more costly to learn from your own mistakes than to learn from an expert. So you can bypass the lion minds, bypass the trouble and struggle of going through all those unnecessary mistakes just by virtue of ignorance. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is chaos. Ignorance is pain. Ignorance is sleepless nights. Ignorance is debt. Ignorance is wasted time, time you can never get back. Ignorance is failure. So the clients we work with are the ones who want to create a magical life, but they don't just want to create a magical life. They're committed to it. And they realize it's not going to just take ambition. Everyone has the ambition for champion level results to some degree. But if you have chump level routines, we've got a problem. They're willing to level up their routines to champion level routines so they can get and deserve champion level results. We don't get what we want. We get what we deserve. So the clients we work with are the ones who realize that it's not enough to just merely want success, want abundance, want a fruitful life, want a champion level life. They have to be strategically intelligent to en engineer their life, their calendar, their routines to be in sync with their champion level results that they have on their dream board, that they have as a target for 2021 and beyond. And that means having champion level results to justify and put them in a position where they're under the spout where all the good stuff pours out to get champion level results. And that's why people hire us because they don't want to be messing around doing it the hard way, banging their head against the wall, going nowhere. They're freaking sick and tired of that. They're ready to step up now, not someday. With a proven plan, with the right support, the right structure, and the right formula, the right blueprint. So they can just go straight to what works without messing around doing it the hard way. And that way they can banish worry. They can put worry under their feet, have dominion over fear not be dominated by fear. So if that's you and you're defiantly committed to increasing your income by at least $100,000 in the next year, and you wanna start working smarter, not harder, and you're on 100% commission making 80 basis points or higher, and you know that you can only grow your income to the extent you grow yourself, that your inner growth always precedes your outer growth, your inner growth in your mindset, in your heart set, in your identity, in your ability to do the things you need to do even when you don't feel like doing them is inextricably linked as the prerequisite to having growth without in your bank account. If you know that to be true and you know that you've been getting in your own way, and you know that you've been your own bottleneck and you're sick and freaking tired of that and you're ready to step up to your breakthrough, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we get on the phone either with myself or one of my consultants and we just have a real talk, honest conversation about where you're at now, where you want to be, and if we can help you create a breakthrough and bridge that gap, by all means, we'll show you how and what that looks like. If not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, you'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are more clarity than you've ever had in your entire business bar, none. And chances are we'll even have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, I invite you to book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Now you might be thinking, Dorn, I don't want to be talking to a salesperson. I don't want to be roped into any you know, high pressure sales pitch. I'm glad you mentioned that. And you'll be glad to know that's not what this is about. If anything, this is about you giving us the information we need to discern if we can help you. If anything, it's about us getting clarity as to whether or not we're the right fit. If anything, it's us discerning if we can help you, if we want to help you, if we're the right synergistic fit to work together to help you create your breakthrough. And if anything, it's about you proving to us that you're the kind of client we can help, not the other way around. So let's be real. This is not a sales pitch. This is not a sales call. This is a clarity call. This is a call born out of honesty, 
vulnerable, authentic truth, getting real with where you are and where you want to be and what it really freaking takes to bridge that gap. So this is all about shining the light of truth on your situation. If we have to sell you on your dream, you're not ready for your dream. If we have to sell you on your breakthrough, you're not ready for your breakthrough. So I just want to make sure we're clear on that before we go any further. Now, if that still sounds like a nice, logical next step for you to gain clarity, if you're open to getting more clarity on what it's going to take to create a breakthrough in your business and you'd like some help from true experts who have been in the game for 15 plus years, this is not our first rodeo, go ahead and book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. This is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We were just talking about the suck of living in worry prison and how to escape to planet prosper once and for all. It's all about banishing fear and stepping into love, stepping into faith, stepping into peace, power, poise, and stepping into the, into the best version of yourself in power, not in fear, in faith, not in fear, in peace, not in fear. That's when the best version of yourself shows up. And that is the person you need to become to create your dream life, to step into the abundant life. So I trust you got some distinctions, some value, some clarity from this. If you'd like to learn more, you'd like to see what we can do for you, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging with me. We'll talk to you again on the next episode. Peace.